in just over a minute in the middle of the night. It was really bad. These three burglars took store owner Sari Flyja for thousands. I was really angry, upset. Cameras at his tobacco shop in Eden Prairie did little to identify the criminals wearing hoodies and gloves. A shoe print on the counter, the only evidence left behind. But Five Investigates has learned detectives were counting on Google to tell them everything they needed to know. With no leads and no suspects, a judge signed a warrant in November ordering the tech giant to give up the minute-by-minute -minute location of every phone in the area that was connected to Google services, including the ever-popular Google Maps. Just like biological or physical evidence. But when we sat down with Eden Prairie Police, they were reluctant to talk about their new investigative tool. So look down and read, sure is okay? Yeah. okay? Reading from a prepared uh, statement. Digital evidence is often stored on personal devices. When we press for answers. And this is just one of the ways that, one of the methods that we're able to uh, obtain that evidence. I mean, is this becoming one of the most important witnesses at just about every crime scene? Privacy advocates are also asking questions yeah. about the explosion of similar search warrants filed in Minnesota and across the country. Should police be able to cast a dragnet sweeping in information about lots of totally innocent bystanders in an attempt to find one unknown suspect. Google recently revealed it saw a one-year 500% increase in those requests from police known as reverse location or geofence search warrants. Five investigates tracked more than 40 of those warrants filed in Hennepin and Ramsey counties last year, up from just a handful the year before. The largest department, Minneapolis, used the tactic only twice. There was no record of St. Paul PD using it at all. Instead, we found nearly half of the geofence warrants filed by two smaller departments, Eden Prairie and Brooklyn Park Police. Yes, we're kind of casting a net, but the net is very small and specific. Brooklyn Park Deputy Chief Mark Bruley says getting information from Google can take months and it has to be approved by a judge. I think there's checks and balances there that ensure that this tool is used in a way that's interest public safety without treading on the rights of people. Our cell phones are so good at tracking us because they're constantly checking in with every cell tower, Wi-Fi router, and Bluetooth device around us. And here's how a geofence warrant works. Investigators first draw a boundary around the crime scene and select a specific window of time. Google then provides the real-time movements of every cell phone, each labeled with an anonymous ID number going in and out of that zone. What if that ropes in a church or an AA meeting or a doctor's office? Yeah, so, so two answers I would have for you. One is that's why we should narrow it down as much as possible. We're not getting people's identity. We're not getting people's bank accounts. We're not getting people's names. But we found they can and they have. When the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office investigated a middle of the day shooting in this Holiday Inn Express parking lot here in Golden Valley last year, Detectives said they believe there could be at least four suspects, but we found they still got a warrant for Google to give up the real names and personal information of 19 people who were linked to phones that were in this area at the time. We tried to ask how that might invade the privacy of innocent bystanders, but the sheriff's office declined to comment, citing an active investigation. Does that raise questions for you? It absolutely does, and that's um, you know, part of the reason that I'm skeptical of this back and forth process between the company and police. Nate Fried Wessler is a staff attorney with the ACLU Speech, Privacy and Technology Project in New York. What we have here is an investigative power that has never existed in the history of humanity. Wessler and others now closely following a federal bank robbery case out of Virginia. When surveillance images didn't immediately lead to a suspect, investigators narrowed down Google location history from 19 phones to eventually charge this man, Okello Chatry, with the crime. In a first-of-its-kind motion to throw out that evidence, Chatry's lawyers called it a modern-day incarnation of a general warrant prohibited by the Fourth Amendment, which protects against unlawful search and seizure. For example, a piece of paper that purports to allow police to bust down every door in a neighborhood looking for a particular suspect. It is not lost on us that there is a privacy concern here. Crystal's deputy police chief, Brian Hubbard, says those privacy concerns are at least part of why his department has only filed two geofence warrants so far. And so we have to weigh that against the, the public good of we have crimes to solve. None of the 17 agencies we contacted reported having a policy on geofence warrants. 
And we found several departments using the controversial tool for nonviolent crimes, including burglaries, theft, and fraud. Some police we spoke to compared the high-tech tactic to traditional canvassing. If we had, you know, a major crime out in the street, we'll knock on every door in that street, talk to all the neighbors about what they've seen, what they, you know. But doesn't knocking on the door stop short of going into somebody's pocket and seeing their phone. Yeah, and I mean this is I mean and I think that's why we're here today. I mean this is tools of the 21st century. This is a change. This is a good step, honestly. Sorry, Flyja says he just wants the people who broke into his store to be caught. If you didn't do anything wrong, I don't think you you have to worry about anything.